I was telling Sapna when she came day before yesterday. My thing is that I feel that food is a human birthright. It's not that rich people only should eat good food. Everybody should eat for good food. And at affordable prices. And, at, and if someone wants to get into growing food, he should be taught how to grow food in the most simplest way. Means without a lot of money being spent. If you, you cannot raise the barrier to entry for a person who wants to grow some food. You can do that in many other areas, correct? If I want to get into some kind of atomic something or something, those kind of things, nuclear engineering, obviously the levels are there. I was at an exhibition and I spoke just day before yesterday at the International Tech Congress. And I saw one company from Holland which supplies very tiny cameras which are fixed onto satellites. And they have very high resolution and God knows what, what, what. It's only such a small camera, only 40,000 euros. But for, for satellite technology, that's okay because that's a, that's a level. <laughs> so it's fine. But here, so what I do is in my lecture, my endeavor is to tell you how to use low tech but high skill. You may have the best of technology, but what if you don't know what to do with it? So I, as I keep teaching, you will hear more. So the, the whole... Uh, I mean, the whole reason of my teaching people is how to do it simply, how to keep it simple. Yes, when things go up to a certain scale, certain amount of automation definitely helps. I'm, I don't say that automation is bad, but the idea is we must start our journey with the first step. Everyone wants to start from where they want to be, but nobody wants to take the trouble of starting that first step, walking up and then going up the Everest and putting that flag there and saying, yes, you can also go to the Everest with a helicopter possibly and just land there and say, oh, yeah, I did, I did it. So it's up to people to people, right? So, hmm. sorry. We keep using the word hydroponics. Actually, the, hydro, uh, the word hydroponics is a nice, nice, beautiful word to use. It sounds like when you tell somebody I'm in hydroponics, they think you're in some NASA program or some kind of some new project or something very interesting. But actually hydroponics is part of a larger subject, which we call a soilless cultivation. And it's split into two parts. One is hydroponics and one is, sorry, media culture. Media culture, that means solid media. The media can be anything like cocoa peat. It can be simple sawdust. It can be rice husk. It can be volcanic rock. It can be sponge. It can be rock wool. Many, any, any kind of media that is sterile and on its own does not possess or have any nutrition in it. And then you have hydroponics, where hydroponics is split into two parts, hydro and ponics. Hydro comes from Latin, which means, you know, water. And ponics comes from the word ponos, which is a Greek word, which means to work. So you can call it working in water or water working, whichever way you like. And this, this lovely little word was given by Dr. William Gerrick, who worked extensively in the early 1930s in the United States on this subject. Hydroponics was used in, a, in an island where the Americans were surrounded in, in the World War time by the Japanese. And some several thousand troops were stuck because they had completely engulfed all the island. Now, there were no supplies, there were no logistics, how to eat food. So they actually used hydroponics just to produce some leafy vegetables and small, small things like that to survive. It's a true story. It happened in between 39 and 45 during the Second World War. So hydroponics is not something that man has invented. Lotus is a natural hydroponics. A water lily floating in the water is natural. It's all natural hydroponics, correct? It is just that up to a point in time, people kept watching it. And then someone said, there must be more to it. So we need to do a little more in-depth study. That's how they, it became a proper science over a period of time. 
there is no field of uh, horticulture, if you call it, which is so intensively being studied, so well understood, to a point where we actually grow plants by empowering plants. <laughs> we empower the plants. We know what kind of water balance, what kind of energy balances, what kind of assimilates, that means which are produced. We think that we are giving food to the plants, right? But plants produce their own food by photosynthesis, right? So how is that distributed by the plant, within the plant? Has it reached the right places? All this has been studied in depth over a period of time and people continue to keep on studying it. So it is not, some people think, oh, hydroponic success is all based on that nutrient formula. Th you know, these are the kind of myths that are spread. Hydroponic pr produce uh, yields are 100 times more. It's, these are the kind of myths which will, people spread. Hydroponics does not use any kind of chemical pesticide. Lie. <laughs> Hydroponics makes plants grow faster. <laughs> Lie. A plant will grow as at its own genetic pace. Right? You never got a beard when you were five years old. You got a beard when you grew up to 14, 15, whatever, when the genetics triggers it. I got white hair at what time? When the genetics said, oh, okay, boy, you are now fit to have a white hair. That's all it is. So, a lot of these myths are floating around in the, in the industry, if you might call it. And my job is to bust them. So, I keep busting them. You know, like they're, they're, they're bugs which are actually taking people on the wrong path. The idea is not to say that you know everything. It is more important to say that you don't know something. And if you don't know something, it's okay to be not knowing something. You cannot know everything. And we are not here to know everything. And if there is something that you need to know, it it will be told to you. You will, it, you will come across it. That's, that's my personal belief. So, like I said, in soilless cultivation, it's not for people who are lazy, people who think, oh, I know everything, or I'm overconfident, or people who leave things for tomorrow, or people who procrastinate, as we call. For such kind of people, this is not the field. It is also not a field for people who are absentee farmers. Oh, I will sit, I'll put people. I get calls from people. I've got 100 acres of land, I've got 500 crores to spend, and he sent me a whole big list of vegetables he wants to grow, he wants to export, and I keep listening. So after, at the end of his, the person talking to me on the phone, I say, and who's going to grow all this? And then, but you can consult for us. I said, I can consult for you, but I'm not going to be sitting on your farm every day. So whom are you going to make, which kind of people are kind of, kind of going to grow food at your farm? Oh, it's okay. We'll get a BSc agriculture graduate. There are so many who pass out and MSc agriculture and PhDs are there. We'll just pay them nicely. They'll come, they'll work. Do they really think that it is possible? Do you really think a person who's got theory knowledge can come and actually put a seed and make something happen? It's very rare. Among engineers, if you see, the people who are diplomas, they are practically very good. The engineers are theoretically very good. And it's not, it's the, it's the system is like that. So, I tell them, I will never consult for you, sir, because I know you don't have the skill to do it. I already know that you're going to fail. So I don't need your money. I, I never take up such projects. But yes, if you are my students and you go, after six months you come and say, CV, can you consult for my commercial? I'll be most happy. Provided you show me some tangible, something that you've done. I'll be more than happy to consult, help you with your projects. I've got one happening in Hyderabad, which is a three acre system, but they're my students. They went back, they trained, they learned, they did a small prototype pilot. Then I kept monitoring it. Then I felt, okay, if you are, now you, are, you could be ready. I told them to start with quarter acre, but they finally went and did three acres, for which I shouted at them. I shouted at them. I said, this is not the way to start. You always start small and then keep scaling up. Don't go and put 100 acres of greenhouses. What do you think? It's so easy to run 100 acres, 25 acres. Yesterday, I was with a gentleman in Bangalore. He runs a company called Ma Floritech, supposed to be a famous flower, flower grower, roses. He was telling the same thing. He, he says people think running 25 acres of greenhouses is easy. You know what kind of coordination you need, what kind of planning is required, what kind of scheduling of work is involved. There's so much of things to do, right? So one should 
drop the idea of or that this this kind of thing is so simple and easy because unfortunately the whole media and the internet is all telling everyone this is money making this is simple and most people are trying to sell product many workshops i know people are selling mainly they are calling people in the name of training they want to sell product they want to sell pipe they want to sell sensors this that 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 and then they also show them dreams on excel sheets you cannot do farming on an excel sheet yes you you, you can do certain calculations but you cannot say that bingo this will happen because we live in the times of climate change <laughs> global warming global warming is not something that's going to happen 100 years later we are already in it we all know it unseasonal rains late monsoons correct we all know it so where is this formula going to end up i had two guys who came to me from bombay they somebody had set up a nft farm for them and these two guys of managers they came they came to dharwar to see me and they were saying that somebody set up this nft system for them and <coughs> their idea was to grow um, leafy lettuce leafy lettuce and uh, when they were making their excel sheet this company which was setting up the nft system said they were asked how much will be the average weight of a leafy lettuce so the guy said 450 to 500 grams per plant no problem i have in my 19 years i have not seen a leafy lettuce of 450 grams leave alone 450 200 if you cross itself is a big thing so they put it on the excel sheet then they asked how many crops can we grow per annum they said up 16 to 18 crops which is correct so they put 16 they took the high end 18 crops into so many plant slots into so much weight per kg this much and they were so impressed they said wow and they gave the contract to these guys now people are selling people are selling dreams on an excel sheet people are selling dreams by telling things which are not true i mean why would you do it in the first place you don't want to take anyone on the wrong path if you can't be of help at least don't take somebody on the wrong path correct so many of my students come they end the day when i finish my lecture like today people who come with rolls royce ideas in their heads i send them back with the maruti 800 and i promise i'll do that today <laughs> so you got this you got this okay now like i said hydroponics or soilless agriculture is a very unforgiving science it doesn't give you much tolerance of for errors margin of errors and time taken to decide what to do it has to be quick uh, and you can only take quick decision if you have skill 